Battle of Clessy, the crushing victory that led to the first truce of the Hundred Years' War. The Middle Ages was not only the period in which European civilizations developed politically, socially and economically, but also the territorial limits of each country were defined. But due to the idiosyncrasies of the time, these limits were established by means of armed conflicts that constantly moved the territorial horizons. Motives such as these led France and England to confront each other in the famous Hundred Years' War. The French began to claim the lands that the English had accumulated in French territory, and the war broke out on May 24, 1337. It is in this context that 11 years after the beginning of the war, the Battle of Crecy took place. How could an army enter enemy lands in advance, taking everything in its path? Let's talk today about the decisive Battle of Crecy, the clear example that winning a battle does not mean winning a war. Let's begin. Prelude. Edward III, King of England, started a recruiting project with which he managed to gather an army so large that it had to be transported by 700 ships, the largest English naval fleet up to that date. The French were well aware of the plan the English had, which was to land in northern France and move into their lands. Despite this, the French were completely confident that they could easily contain the English ships and repel any kind of advance on dry or maritime frontiers. Surprisingly for them, the English managed to break through their ranks and landed on the borderlands on July 12, 1345. As they had previously planned, they began to descend from the south and plundered everything in their path to stock up on supplies. Two weeks later, the fleet returned to England again and from there, they were directed to the Seine River, where they arrived on August 7th of the same year. Edward's Intimidation of the French The English army had orders to head for Paris and burn everything in its path. The French were preparing their forces in the capital, where they had concentrated a large army, due to the enormous number of recruits who joined the fight. King Philip VI even ordered his son, John of Normandy, who at that time was in charge of the main French army, to forget about the siege they were carrying out in Aguilon and to concentrate all his forces in the capital. John obeyed the orders, but his appearance was too late and he could do nothing to prevent what was happening in the north of the country. The French army covering the entrance to Paris numbered about 18,000 men and were in a constant position of defence. Philip sent a letter to Edward challenging him to fight at a nearby location, a challenge to which Edward responded by inviting the French army to fight south of the Seine. On August 16th, the French had taken position, but Edward ignored their move and burned Poissy to the ground, where they had been encamped for a week. After this, he marched north and left the French waiting, days before the battle. Philip placed a blockade on the Somme River that prevented the advance of the English troops. In addition, he burned all the bordering lands so that they could not be supplied with provisions. This move demoralised the English army as they were beginning to feel the fatigue of the campaign due to hunger. Because of this, Edward tried to break the blockade attacking other fronts and that the Somme River remained unprotected, but this strategy was in vain. He finally achieved part of this task by marching north and crossing a ford called Blancatac. He defeated an army of three and a half thousand men and began to be fiercely pursued by the surrounding armies. The confidence of the French regarding the Somme was so great that they did not ravage the lands on the shore, so the English took advantage of this and managed to resupply. Edward expected the reinforcement of the Flemings on the other side of the Somme but they were besieged by the French and subsequently defeated. So it was finally decided to confront them with the army he had at the time, since he had little choice but direct combat. English Army The troops commanded by Edward were composed mainly of English and Welsh, 
plus some German and Flemish mercenaries. The number of troops is estimated between 10 and 15,000 units, distributed among men-at-arms, archers mounted on light cavalry, spearmen and longbow archers. The latter are commonly pointed out as the key factor for the English victory at Cressy, since it was the most numerous unit of the army, besides being decisive for the beginning and the end of the battle. This made clear the effectiveness of the longbow, which would remain in force in the English ranks for years. French Army On the other hand, the troops commanded by Philip VI were numerically much superior, some say up to three times more. But records indicate that the number of soldiers was 25 to 30,000, divided into men-at-arms, infantrymen, crossbowmen and heavy cavalrymen. They were mostly French soldiers, but had a large platoon of Genoese crossbowmen, very experienced in the use of the crossbow. Formation and initial deployment. The English army strategically positioned itself on a sloping hillside and formed up in a defensive posture. The troops had arrived at the site a day earlier, so they were perfectly rested and prepared for the day of battle. During that time, they dug ditches to lessen the effectiveness of heavy cavalry charges that the vanguard could carry out. In addition, they prepared a very clear retreat area in case they should have to flee. The French arrived on the battlefield in a disorganised manner, a situation that was beginning to cause tension to grow among the less experienced soldiers. That is why Edward began to provoke the French cavalry to try to charge them and make them fall into the previously dug ditches. But the French strategy was different. The first duel was between the English archers and the crossbowmen, who apparently had the advantage due to the heavy storm that broke out at that very moment. The archers had to loosen the strings on their bows, while the crossbowmen did not have to worry about this thanks to the leather technology of the crossbow. However, they fled almost immediately after firing the first round, as a crossbow could fire up to two arrows per minute, while longbow archers could fire ten arrows per minute before they began to feel fatigue and slow down. Battle It is at this point that the French troops begin to despair due to the rapid retreat of the Genoese crossbowmen, who began to be accused of being traitors by the French knights themselves, Meanwhile, the English archers did not stop harassing the numerous French army with arrows. The heavy cavalry began to march uphill to try to break the English ranks and stop the arrow attack, but they constantly ran into the Genoese crossbowmen, who kept retreating from the front line. By the time they were able to reach the middle of the slope, their horses were already wounded and frightened, so the riders were knocked down and in many cases killed by the stampede of horses trying to flee downhill. From that moment on, the battle became an imminent defeat for the French, who did not stop trying to break the English ranks with cavalry. They used the same strategy for hours and hours, being remembered by some Englishmen as knights who tried to fight to the last man. King Philip himself was seriously wounded in an attempt to climb uphill, which ended up demoralizing the army who quickly retreated. The French suffered between 150 and 400 casualties, while the English had between 40 and 300 dead. Repercussion The French failure in the battle almost completely shattered the image of Philip VI. In addition to raising the effectiveness of the longbow over the crossbow, which lasted a few years. It's one of England's most decisive battles as it handed them a valuable trading port in northern France that they would use for several years. The Hundred Years' War resulted in countless bloody battles, as both sides were supplied with soldiers and mercenaries willing to give their lives on the battlefields. The conflict lasted 116 years and marked a before and after, not only in European history, but also in the entire West. Don't close the video yet. Before you go, please subscribe and leave us a like if you like the content. It will help us grow and keep making much more content. Now, without further ado, 
we bid you farewell. <laughs>